Hello and welcome. My name is Tadej Blažić and I'm a freelance 3D designer from Slovenia. Today we continue our character creation series by creating an environment that creates interaction with our bee. We will create a beehive and learn how to punch a hole into it, how to create collision planes that are optimized for hair dynamics. So, let's get into it. This is where we last left off. We're going to go into front view on our numpad. We're going to turn off the hair particles so they're not lagging our system and we'll just move to the right. We will make a beehive that's going to respond to the collisions of our bee or rather our bee's hair. We will begin by adding a cube with shift A, mesh, cube. We're going to press G, X and move it to our right, G, Z and move it up. So it's about here. We want to scale this cube to be, let's say, quite larger than our B. Press S, hold control, and then drag your mouse to about a scale of 7. You can see the scale in the top left corner. Select, and you get this type of cube. Now, we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. Select the top and bottom face. Now we're going to inset them by pressing I. I, and then we drag inside. Now, we don't want to go too far into our cube. We want to have sort of a thinner crust. And you'll see why a bit later. We need to hollow out our object. And it's very easy to do. I'm going to press space. In other shortcut terms, you can press F1. And then search for bridge edge loops. Click on the bridge edge loops, and this is going to create a hole in your cube. Now exit edit mode, press Control 2, and you get this hollowed out cylinder. Now let's return into our front view, and let's go into our modifiers, and let's apply this subdivision. So we get this. Now we can actually control what's happening with our object. Now, what we're going to do is, still in face select, we're going to select the middle two rows of faces by holding Alt, Shift, and then selecting our loop, like so. When you have selected both of these loops, we're going to press I again, and we're going to hold Control and then drag our mouse outwards. This is going to raise the planes out from the cylinder. I want to make them a bit more exaggerated, so I'm going to drag them to about here. Now I'm going to press S, Z, and scale them on the Z axis, like so. Press I again to inset, control, and drag your mouse. And now you can let go of the control and drag your mouse again. And this is basically going to create sort of a tapered edge type thing, or almost saying fake bevel. And we kind of need that because it's going to give that chunky vibe for our beehive. When you're happy, just click and it's going to inset your faces. Now we're going to repeat the same process with the other faces. We are doing the turns of a beehive. So we're going to leave these guys up for now because we're going to go into edge select. We're going to select the top edge again with the same technique. So alt, shift, and then right click or left click depending on your scheme and then just lower it down so it falls into our beehive. Now that we have this structure we can repeat all of those steps or we can just go into our edit mode, select vertex select and then press Z to go into wireframe and let's just delete or rather press C and then select by clicking all of the bottom vertices, not the middle ones, just the bottom ones. Press X, delete those vertices, so we have this structure, and now we can add a modifier, add a mirror modifier, and instead of the X axis, we're going to choose the Z axis. So it's perfectly mirroring what's happening on the top. Enable clipping, and apply. And we have our mesh mirrored perfectly. We can start thinking about our hole. So our hole has to be slightly larger than our B over here. So in our case, we can select this vertex, and then we have to find the vertex that it's directly behind it, so it's a bit easier to see in wireframe. We shift select both of them, and we return to front view. Now before we do anything, we have to exit edit mode, press Control A, 
and reset the scale. This is very important because it's going to influence the proper way of using our bevel. Now let's go back into edit mode. We're gonna press Control Shift B. Now we're going to drag our mouse. So this is going to create this rectangular shape. And as you can see, it's going to create them on both sides. However, we don't want to have this harsh clipping over here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw it back. So again, Control Shift B. And let's make it so that they're barely touching, but they're not covering each other. Now before we continue, press W and choose subdivide. Or you can press F1 and search for subdivide. So we get this subdivision over here. Press W and go into loop tools and select circle. So it's going to create a circular shape. Now if you don't have these tools, you can enable them in edit, preferences, under your add-ons, and there should be loop tools if you search in your search bar. You have mesh loop tools. You just tick and it's going to enable them. And we're going to do the same thing as with the top and the bottom faces of our cylinder. So we're going to search again for bridge edge loops, press it, and it's going to make the hole into our beehive. We're just going to select these two vertices, so the extreme bottom one and extreme top one. We're going to press G, Y, and just drag them out so they follow the shape of our beehive. One last thing we have to do here is we will select all of the vertices that don't have a direct connection or direct edge with other vertices and we're going to connect them so we can create nice rectangular faces. So we're going to shift select the appropriate vertices. So in this case, it's going to be the top right one and we're just gonna press J. This is going to connect the two vertices with an edge and create a face in the meantime. We're going to repeat this with all of the other edges so we get a nice shape. We are also going to do that in the bank as it's extremely important for later on. We will be using a bevel and we will be using the weight option of the bevel and it's extremely important that we have a nice clear edge. Now, if you find that the hole is too small for our B, there's two possible ways of going. We can resize the whole beehive to be larger, or we can just resize the bee. In our case, we can just make the beehive slightly larger. We will still modify our beehive. Let's move our beehive here again. So we see we have this base shape. Let's press Control 2 to create a subdivision. Now it's slightly better, but it's still not what we want, especially because of this hole over here. Now we have to add a bevel and we will be moving this bevel before or above the subdivision. Now this in itself could actually work as a sort of a low poly style beehive. So if you like it, you can actually use this one. You can just press W or search shade smooth with F1. However, we want to have a nice defined edge, but a nice rounded beehive. We're going to go into weight limit method, so it looks like this. Press N, and then you have a item menu. If you go into edit mode, you will see edge data, bevel weight. This is extremely important because if we go into edge select, and now loop select the two edges of our hole, and increase the mean bevel weight, we get sharp edges. This is also one of the methods of how to cut a hole in Blender inside of your objects. The offset, we can decide how sharp or how blunt our hole will be. The segments will also influence the sharpness. So this, for example, is extremely sharp, so we don't want that. We want a sort of rounder shape, but the edge still has to be clear. You can also increase the subdivisions so you can see that it's working perfectly. We will need fewer subdivisions, let's say something like that. Choose the top edge, open proportional editing. So we'll just press O. And if we scale our object now, we can also increase the area of influence that is going to affect the vertices and edges of our object. And now basically what we can do is just bring the top closer and the bottom also. In this case, we can just select both of those. So we have our top selected, now we can Alt Shift loop select the bottom one, so we have both selected. Let's just zoom out slightly so we see a bit better. 
S and then we can press Shift Z so we just scale on the X and Y axis. Now we can bring the top and bottom together. Again, this is not just going to work immediately. You have to move them in slightly together then press S again, maybe it's even more. You can just Shift Z and bring them even more. Maybe you can elongate them, so S, Z, and you then can bring the whole thing around like this. But this is already looking as a really good beehive or a really good approximation of a beehive. Perfect. Now, we won't be complicating with the top too much. We can just cheat a bit. So select the top edge again by holding Alt Shift and then selecting. Shift S, cursor to select it. And now we can just plant a, let's say UV sphere. Shift A, mesh UV sphere. Let's go into front view so we can see a bit better what's happening. So let's press S to scale, Shift Z, and now let's scale it on the X and Y axes, like so. W to shade smooth, and we've essentially closed our beehive. We can leave the bottom open, but for rendering sake, we can just duplicate and move the top to the bottom. And that's it. We have our beehive structure. Now that we have our beehive, let's just do one last thing to it. We will be creating the interaction collision for our hair. As it is now, we could just add a collision to our object and just call it a day, but it would present some problems. When you have large objects with collisions, it can have some unwanted effects. What we want to do is we just want to have a portion of this functioning as a collision. Now, if we add a collision, you can see that we cannot decide on a vertex group. So we're just going to go out of the collision. We're going to select our B and we're going to go into our hair system. Open the monitor so we can see, let's say, the height of our hair. So we need a large portion of the middle part of our beehive around the hole. So let's turn off the hair. Let's reselect our beehive. We're going to go into edit mode, face select. And we will select all of the faces that are around the hole as well as the hole itself. If you're not sure what you're doing, you can also go into the modifier properties and just turn off the bevel and subdivision so you can see clearly your selections. Now we can also go inside, like zoom, select all of the faces that are inside. Let's have a larger selection in the inside. When we go outside, it looks like this. And when you check, you can also scrub the parts that you don't like by just pressing C and then holding the middle mouse button and just deselecting the faces by hovering over the dots. So we have this like sort of corridor type of structure. Now we're going to press Shift D, which will duplicate the structure, deselect it and press P, separate selection. And if we go back into object mode and select just the corridor, press G, Y, and we have our separate corridor. We still have to do just a bit of work on it. So we're going to go into edge select. We will be selecting two of the top edges, press F1 or space to search for bridge edge loops. And now we're going to connect all of these loops with the bridge edge loops. Don't worry about the geometry for these ones. It's very simple geometry. It's not going to influence as much the collisions of our hair. So we just have this structure over here. If you are, however, concerned, you can also clean up this structure by just deleting or dissolving a couple of edges, like so. You just select X and then choose Dissolve the Edge. So you have fewer geometry points. We can either turn on the bevel again and turn on the subdivision again, so we have this. Let's just correct this, choose this edge, press N and decrease the mean bevel. Let's just check that we don't have the same thing happening inside. So let's click on our beehive, edit mode, and then decrease the bevel so it's working correctly. Let's go into edit mode again, press A twice, so we select all of this. Control N to recalculate the normals. Otherwise, you can use F1 or space to search for recalculate normals. This is extremely important because we need the proper normals orientation for our object and our collisions to work well. Control A to reset the scale and Shift Control Alt C, origin to geometry. 
So we have a perfectly balanced object. Now let's click on our beehive, open up again our subdivision and our bevel. So maybe you don't want to have the object visible. You can solve this issue by going into your object properties, viewport display, and under display as, instead of textured, choose wire. So you'll just see a wire of the actual object. You can then move on the y-axis your collision object inside. Now we can just go into our physics settings and set the collision. We can also decrease the thickness of the outer to 0.01 and the inner to, let's say, 0.05. will be completely fine. We can also change those settings later when we see how our hair will interact with the whole animation part. So this is it for this part. We have created a hive. You now know how to use insetting to create sort of chunkier structures. You also see how to create holes and precise holes at that in objects. We created a collision object for our hair dynamics. And now what remains is we animate our bee popping out of this hole. Join us next time when we start to animate our scene. We will make our bee pop out of the hole that we have created and make it influence the hair. So we actually have that fluffy sort of recoil. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.